Hey there, folks, and welcome back to another episode of our venture in the visual novel, If My Heart Had Wings, Flight Diary. In the last episode, oh boy, more memories down the road. Memory lane, memory lane, memory lane. But of course, transitioning out of that, Aoi seeked out to find Kotori, but come to find out she was not in her dorm, and the Kazuto sisters had informed Aoi that they had saw Kotori over in the windmill area, to which he charged off as a means to find her. But come to find out in seeing the whereabouts of Iska, who was in the hangar and wanting to sneak a little bit of memory lanes herself in the cockpit of the glider, come to find out that Kotori was in there and gave her a little bit of a jump scare. But the two managed to share some time with them to where Kotori ended up being vulnerable with Iska in that regard. And it kind of happened a little bit more naturally. And they talked about a lot in Iska was able to pick up on Kotori's sadness and wanted to find out what it was as a means to help her in that regard, to which things came out about the argument between Kotori and Aoi, and also the fact of the reason being why Kotori acted the way that she did, which of course was related to a feeling of inadequacy in a way and feeling that she would be left behind. And honestly, this can be somewhat of a similarity in many cases to how many of us in the real world may tend to act where when we feel like we don't have the goal yet in our lives and we see others who do have a goal we feel like we're going to be left behind but understand this that is not the time to basically start isolating yourself that is not the time to get into a prideful act and then start pushing people away that's actually the worst thing you could do because in that you're not actually really showing strength. You're really showing some weakness in that regard. And it is okay to be vulnerable around people who are trustworthy. The key factor is they must be trustworthy, meaning they will look out for your well-being. So that's important. And they should be helping you to grow. Now, in Kotori's case, she's feeling like she's being handicapped and being pettied because of her disability with her legs. However, her legs have been getting stronger at the same time. But again, she's dealing with all of this for the first time. So this is something that she's got to work through. And Iska is starting to help her with that. So that's a good thing. So with that, Iska went over to the control table as the two were conversing. And let's see at that point what she's planning to do in that regard. Here we go. For a second, Kotori thought she was disgusted by her whining and was leaving. Yeah, probably give her a little bit of uh, motivation. Yabo? Iska nodded. Iska spread both hands out in expectation. She was clearly waiting for a reaction. But Kotori was dumbfounded. There was no reason to go to all the trouble of starting her own club, Kotori thought. Izuka pointed down. This music score is awesome. Iska nodded, grinning like a mad woman. She was overflowing with confidence. Kotori thought she was crazy. But of course, they had been too. Of course, nobody knew when the morning glory clouds would come again. But somehow, they just knew in their hearts that they would come 
that summer. And once they decided that, they worked hard building a glider and testing it. Looking back, they were so dumb. But at the same time, it was amazing, thought Kotori. While Kotori sat there dumbfounded, Iska picked up a picture frame from the table. Ah yes, that one. And she stood there smiling at the soaring club members in the picture. When Kotori found Izuka's notebook in her room, she had read her diary like she was an imaginary friend of hers. It helped her get through those lonely days when she didn't have a friend in the world. あの、誰かに覚えてて欲しかったんだ。でもまさかその誰かが僕の夢の続きを追いかけて、そして叶えてくれるなんて思ってもみなかった。Iska's notebook had pushed her to try gliding, and she had taken up her aspirations. To Kotori, Iska was like an imaginary friend, someone she owed a lot to. Iska looked at the photo of all of them. I'm sure we can work some chroma key to get her in there. <laughs> Iska's expression grew clouded as she stared at the photo. Her eyes narrowed, almost as if she were reminiscing, but she also seemed sad. Isuka shook her head. Kotori didn't fly the morning glory all by herself. It was the bonds of friendship. It was amazing people like Amane. It was the dream Kotori found in that notebook. And luck. Kotori had to take all of that and put it all together to experience a miracle. But just like Iska said, unshaking belief in that dream was also essential to making that miracle happen. <laughs> Alright, alright, good determination. Izuka swore, staring into the photograph. Then she turned to Kotori, still curled up in the cockpit, hugging her knees in sadness. Oh my gosh, what was that? Was what, what, what was that phrase? Oh, Doki Doki, yep, Doki Doki, when it's a heartbeat, Doki Doki. Kotori's heart suddenly leapt. Uh, probably a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Maybe, maybe one of those. Hmm. There it was again. For some reason, Kotori's heart was pounding in her chest. She couldn't remember the last time she had felt that way. The words in her mouth felt like lies against the pounding of her pulse. どうして? 
だってみんなそう言うじゃない先生だって他の人たちだってイスカ・フラウンドは笑っていたのでバカだな小鳥はいや、ワイズンは一度、ウィリアム。彼女は一度、正しいとか間違ってるとか、僕はないと思う。As long as you ain't doing nothing immoral or illegal. それを決められるのは自分だけだ。だってそうだろ誰かにとって正しくても、他の誰かにとって間違ってるってことはたくさんあるんだ。だから僕は、僕にとって何が正しいか。She does have a point here in the cases thereof. Folks may want to try to decide what's best for you, and they may have good intention in that. However, whatever your particular purpose is in serving on this planet, you gotta, you gotta operate in that. And then Iska placed her hand on her chest. Kotori put her hand on her own chest, just like Iska did. Wait a minute. Because she's beginning to. She, it, is it possible? Is it possible she may be starting to find her purpose and the the heartbeat? It's the inner awakening. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> Kotori felt her heart pound and a strong, impatient wish. Was that her answer? Neither Iska nor Amane really considered themselves all that special. But Kotori guessed that real geniuses often don't think highly of themselves. In many cases, if not all, they don't. Yep, I'll keep it on the wraps. If Gotori had been her normal self, she thinks she would have been utterly shocked. Kotori was thinking about why Iska came here. She had visited the club from time to time to get a taste of the atmosphere. Try not to be too stubborn, Kotori. Hey, I'm just being reasonable here, okay? Tori stood up and got out of the cockpit. Iska helped her. Yes, you do know what to do, you just don't really want to do it, but you know exactly what you need to do. Yeah, please do that. If you really love this kid, don't be dragging him. 
Folks, don't ever do that. You better have a lot more drive than that, young lady. out here did they finally leave I stayed hidden until Kotori and Iska had left little sneaky one ain't you always little sneaky liar I wasn't trying to eavesdrop but when I came here looking for Kotori I'd heard the two of them talking so that's what's been bothering Kotori I thought she was just lonely I'm a failure as a boyfriend. I grasped the item I'd brought, muttering to myself. Eh, you're going through all of this for the first time as well. When I got back, Iska was there. It's nice to see you, Iska. Alright, come on, let's get this over with. Tori was preparing dinner in the kitchen. Sorry I'm late. Kotori awkwardly avoided eye contact with me. At the same time, she glanced over to check my expression. She was probably expecting me to ask where she had been. And how worried I had been. I just washed my hands, put on an apron, and started helping her. We worked silently for a while. <laughs> Ask what? <laughs> she said it like the only way she would apologize was if I had brought it up. But I ignored it and continued cooking without speaking. I wasn't trying to be mean. I just needed to work up my courage. Hey, Kotori. Do you want to go do something tomorrow? And you know what, folks? Let's see how she answers that on the next episode. Oh my gosh, I have not yet gotten too rusty with the cliffhangers. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm very interested to see how they're going to make up on this one because that'll be interesting indeed. But with that, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. If you like what you saw, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing and also check out my other links to my other social media accounts and be sure to follow those too so you can stay in tune with the next productions to be released. So until next time, happy mixing, everyone.